want to thank you for joining us once again in a powerful study of God's Word and understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. I'm Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We truly praise you. We glorify you and magnify you, Father, for who you are. For you are our Father. Father, you have taken the time to work with us, to direct our steps, Father, to keep us by your Holy and Divine Spirit, even in days and times, Father, when it seems like everything is falling apart, you are there with us. And Father, we just want to truly thank you and praise you for it. But Father God, without you, we could do nothing. But because of you, all things become possible. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise be to the living God. We're very grateful that you are able to join us this day as we study God's holy and divine word. In our last study, we talked about the doctrines of truth and how it's important that a person who claims they are a believer or a born-again believer understand the doctrines of God's Word because there are some truths that we as believers must have and must know and one of them was the belief that the Bible is true that the Bible is God's Word and even though we said that man maybe have tampered in some way with wordings that might be there in God's Word one thing is true that the essence of God's Word does not change. If it's God's Word, we have to believe that God is able to keep His own Word. Amen? Glory be to God. He is able to protect His own Word because it is His truth. It is God breathing uh, to us His love letter um, established in our heart. So we know that the Word of God is true. So if the Word of God is true, dearly beloved, we are able to stand upon it. We are able to trust our God that the promises in God's Word will always be true. Amen? That's very important for us to know. And I believe that through that process of knowing what the Father says about His children, then we can establish a true relationship with our Father. If we don't know who our Father is, and we say we are children of God, shame on us, right? I mean, that's like saying, for instance, if your father or your mother lived within the home with you for many years, say when you was from the time you was a baby to the time you were 40 or 30 or maybe 10 or 15 years old, it doesn't really matter you would have established a true relationship with uh, that person because you have lived with them. Well, it's the same essence with our Father. If you have truly established a relationship with Him, then you get to a point where you know some of His thoughts, you know some of His mores, you know some of His personality. Why? Because you have spent time with uh, your mother or father. So we spent time with our Heavenly Father, so that establishes the fact that we should also know who He is. And the way to know our Father is through the Holy Spirit living in us, that is true, but also through His love letter to us, which is the Word of the Living God. And I believe the Word establishes us, it strengthens us, it redirects us when we go wayward outside of God's will. God somehow, the Father, can draw us back unto Himself because of the Word of the living God. So we have established that fact that the Word of God is true. Amen? Glory be to God. And we said before that not everyone who says that they are a Christian is a Christian. With that part, we truly have to understand. That keeps us from aligning ourselves with uh, uh, teachings or doctrines that do not line up with the Word of God. If it is not in God's Word, 
then dearly beloved, it is not of God. Amen? Let me say it again. If it is not in God's word, then it is not part of God's plan. It's not established if it's not in God's word. And many Christians today practice things that have nothing to do with God's word whatsoever. And then, beloved, we need to be mindful of that for our own sake, for our own salvation. Amen? Uh, what I want to uh, speak on today is being justified by faith. Justified by faith. Now, uh, justification by faith. Uh, this is a doctrine uh, for believers. We have to understand this as a born-again believer, that we are not saved by works, we are not saved by good deeds, we are not saved by church participation, we are not saved because we gave all that we had, all the monies that we had, we are not saved uh, because we love everybody, we are saved because of justification by faith. Because we have faith in the finished works that was done at the cross on Calvary by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If Jesus had not gotten up from the grave, nor would you and I be able to get up from the grave one day. Amen. But Jesus got up from the grave. So in turn, that allowed you and I to be able to get up from the grave, up from the grave also. But that is not all of the essence of it. Because Jesus Christ got up from the grave, it now gives you and I authority and access to heaven. The access that we did not have before. Even the children of Israel, as individuals, could not truly call up upon God. It was really... It was when, when God first established his relationship, we remember it was with Adam and Eve in the garden. We know that that was severed because of the rebellion, because of the sin of Adam and Eve. Amen? Then God reestablished his relationship with man through Abraham which we all know about. Abraham being called by God to leave his place and to go into another country that God was going to establish for him a place that was filled with milk and honey well God called Abraham and Abraham did follow God and he headed into the direction that God had called him and there were times that in faith that there were things that were being established in the life of of Abraham but dearly beloved God did not stop there and you know why he didn't because men rebel so often they rebel against the things of God they rebel against God's will they rebel against God's purposes and then so God reestablishes his will in the earth through vessels that he used there come Moses and there where Moses, in a sense, uh, began to work the will of God in the earth. Well, we know about Noah and God reestablishing himself in the earth, even after the destruction of all mankind and everything that was on earth, except that which was in the ark. But uh, he was moved by faith. Abraham is the father of our faith. So faith was there even then. Noah went about doing what God had called him to do. Amen. It was by faith that he built the ark. Amen. So I'm trying to establish something here, dearly beloved. We as believers have always, from the beginning of time, been justified by faith. Justified by what we truly believe. Not necessarily just what we can uh, quote or what we think is the reason that we should be saved. No, we are justified by faith. And so was it for, um, who was it? 
David, all the works that David did, it was by faith. But what God was doing, he was establishing that in the earth, and it has been put in God's word for you and I, for our understanding, so that we can understand that God is real, and God is working in the earth today, and dearly beloved, he is establishing himself in the earth today by faith. Amen? By faith and faith alone. Even though Moses brought the law. We realize that Moses was given the law by God and he brought the law. And the law is more than just the Ten Commandments. There are many laws in the Word of God. And even the Jewish people have a book outside the uh, Bible that is called the Torah, which have other laws within it about what God wanted the people to do and to establish their reality in the earth. Now, what about you and I today? The Word of God teaches us that we are justified by faith. Not by our works, but justified by faith. The Word of God established this fact. That all that Abraham did, even, even though he was the father of faith, all that he did before God and establishing it in the earth, he had nothing that he could boast about that he had done in himself, lest it be a lie, because all of it was done by faith. And so in the earth today, what are you and I establishing? We're establishing our faith. Our faith is our belief in God. Jesus asked this question. To those who were gathered around him. He said, will there be faith in the earth when the Son of Man return? A very powerful question. Why did he ask that? Because Jesus was establishing this fact, the importance of faith being in the earth when he returned. And that's the faith that you and I have. Now let me get something clear before we go further uh, with this justification by faith. Faith does not equate with denomination. Amen. Let me get that clear right now. There are many people who believe, well, my faith is in this, or my faith is in uh, being a Catholic. My faith is being in a Baptist church. My faith is being in Pentecostal. This is my faith. I am a uh, church of God in Christ. That is my faith. No, that is not your faith. That is a denomination that has been established by man. Is there anything wrong with it? I'll let God be the judge of that. But the fact is very clear. That that is not your faith. Your faith is what is in you. The Word of God says that God has given every one of us a measure of faith. The ability, get this now, the ability to believe and to trust. That's what faith is. Faith is believing in something even though you're not able to see it. Glory be to the living God. And no one can come to the Lord but by faith. Amen? You got to believe that he is. You know, as Thomas said in the word of God, when the disciples had shared with them, with him that Jesus had, re, had, had uh, revealed himself, himself to them. And Thomas said that I will not believe unless I am able to touch the nail prints on his hands and thrust my hand into his side where that lance went. If I cannot do that, I will not believe. The word of God said that Jesus appeared to them where they were gathered. 
And he told Thomas to do that very thing that he asked to be done. And then he said, will you believe? But these great words he said, dearly beloved, for you and I, are this. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Dearly beloved, we are that generation, that generation that walks by faith, that generation that believes by faith, that generation that have not seen but believe. We are living in the earth today where there was a time that miracles were on every hand, but we are so far removed from that today that even today, that even when we pray, there are many times that healings do not take place. Yes, that is the truth. Now, I have been healed in many instances, and there are times that uh, uh, there were things that was with my body that it just uh, uh, healed itself naturally because of my body itself and my immune system. And it was not supernatural. But there have been supernatural healings in my life. And I'm sure some of you out there can attest to that. That God has supernaturally healed you before. But because we are living in a world that is so far from believing and trusting God. We are putting our hands in the hands of man. And we are trusting them more than God. And that's why faith is evaporating from this world quickly. And so, dearly beloved, we have to hold on to the faith that we have. We have to hold on and trust the living God. As one said, if you put your faith in man, you will get what man can do which is limited. But if you put your faith in God, you will then be established by His promises. He will fulfill His promises if you put your faith in His Word. Amen? So that's very important that we as believers establish that fact that we are justified by faith. Not by what we can do, not by the works that we participate in, not even the good deeds that we do. Those good deeds come about because of our belief and our faith in the Lord just Jesus Christ. Romans 5 tells us this, the very first verse says, Therefore being justified by faith. Amen? Justified by faith. That's Romans 5 and 1. Therefore being justified by faith. What that means? That means that there is a continual belief and a constant thing between you and the Father. You are constantly engaged with him as long as you are walking in faith that's why the word of god tells us not to cast our faith away but rather we ought to believe and trust because we are justified by the faith that you and i have in the earth or in our father as we dwell on the earth where there is no faith there can be no justification where there is no faith, there can be no justification. So our faith must be what? Directed into what Christ did on Calvary. And not only what he did on Calvary, which was to take on our sins and to die, but he also rose again. Now, dearly beloved, there are many denominations that do not believe this. There are many a sect of so-called believers who do not believe this. Uh, 
For instance, the uh, Islam does not believe this. They do not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. They do not believe that Jesus Christ sit right now at the right hand of the Father. They do not believe that you are able to access heaven because of your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our mediator. They do not believe that. So, dearly beloved, how can you believe anything that they say? How can you trust anything that they say? How can you not understand that the motivating factor behind what they say and do does not line up with the Word of God? That's why, dearly beloved, I said from the very beginning of these studies that everything that you believe have to line up with God's Word. Amen? It has to line up with God's word. So the word of God said we are therefore, we are justified by faith. Amen? Glory be to God. Now, and look what I, look, this was important. Therefore, get this dearly beloved. Therefore, being, being justified by faith. So it is a process. It is something that you and I need to keep in our lives, when we throw away our faith, then we have literally nothing. We cannot say we believe in God if we throw away our faith. We will believe in the essence of a God. We will believe that there is a God of all creation because the word of God says a fool in his heart says there is no God. So you literally would have to be a fool to say that there is no God. So there are many who say there is a God, but yet they don't have faith to believe that God is who he say he is. So dearly beloved, everyone who confesses the Lord Jesus Christ and say that they believe does not necessarily believe. You have to be established in the word. Amen. Glory be to the living God. I'm not trying to preach no denomination. I'm not trying to preach anything about you need to go to this church or that church. What I'm trying to do here today is to get believers to understand wherever you are at in fellowship, no matter where it may be, you have to have a constructive foundation of God's truth in your mind so that when anything comes forth that is contrary to God's word it puts a check in your spirit and you know that what is being shared is not truth or it is truth and you are able to say amen to the truth amen and if it is not the truth you can reject it and move on and dearly beloved, if you are a Christian, one thing has to be established again, that the word of God is true. And secondly, that you who are a believer are justified by faith. And you are being justified by faith. Amen? Justified by your faith. The faith that God has given you from the very beginning. Of even when you were a child. Because the word of God says that every man been given a measure of faith. So every believer or every person who have ever lived on this earth has a possibility within them in order to choose the kingdom of God. And I believe that that's why Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees, the kingdom is within. Glory be to God. The truth is within you already. It's the fact of finding it and establishing it with God. Amen? It is there within you. You can reject it and you can deny it, but dearly beloved, it is there regardless. I remember sharing with one atheist who said, I don't believe that God exists. I don't believe it's wrong. I said to him, I said, there is a knowing in you that God is real. Now, you have rejected it. You are following that which you desire to follow. But within you, there is a knowing. And he got 
rather upset about it because he said, you don't know what's in me. You don't have the slightest idea uh, what is in me. But more and more I talked with this individual. I could tell that there was something that was aggravating him by the simple fact that what I was sharing. Because if you don't believe there's a God and you don't believe there's a heaven or a hell, then if I speak about hell, then that shouldn't affect you at all. Because you don't believe that there's a hell. But dearly beloved, I can tell you one thing. One thing I learned and was established. An atheist may say that he's atheist, he don't believe in nothing at all. But when you begin to talk about hell and condemnation, all of a sudden they change their tune. They want to get rid of you then. Because now you're establishing something at the end of their life, which they say there is nothing. Dearly beloved, we've got to know the word. And the word for us this day is justified by faith. Justification by faith and faith alone. Amen? Glory be to God. Dearly beloved, I pray that the Lord allow you to continue to study with us in God's word. Because we want to establish in the life of our brothers and sisters in Christ a strong relationship with the Lord because we don't want you to fall away in difficult times which will be coming to this earth and is already here now but you can stand on God's word and it's true amen praise be to God and we're going to ask that you join us on Sunday mornings between the hours and 6 and 10 a.m. Uh, where we are preaching the word of God at 92.7 KZJM or www.927kzjm.org uh, on the internet. We are establishing God's word and we are saying what God wants us to say in these last days that we are living, dearly beloved. Dearly beloved, the Lord bless you in a very special way and we call upon our Lord Jesus Christ and we say, Lord Jesus, come quickly.